First Corinthians chapter 12, beginning from verse 4. Welcome to the house of God. Now there are diversities of gifts for the same spirit. There are, and there are differences of administrations for the same Lord. There are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, and to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, and to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, and to another the walking of miracles. If we read this list, we are going to see that there are three power gifts. Now, if you are in custody of that child that is seeking ventilation, you might wish to step out of the hall so that the child can express his or herself. Hallelujah. When we study the gift of the Spirit, which is a study of the patterns of the sovereign move of the Spirit of God, there are a few items that uh, are worthy of note as we commence such a study. My emphasis is on the power gift. What I mean by that is that resident in the Holy Spirit are performing abilities. Resident in the Holy Spirit are abilities to cause changes. Resident in the Holy Spirit are abilities to change circumstances and situations. The Bible makes us to understand that there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God that worketh all in all. We want to look at, my emphasis is to bring us to the knowledge of what we call walking of miracles. But before I can accomplish that, I need to spell out the differences between the power gifts. And the first among the power gifts as written in this list is the gift of faith. The gift of faith. In the gift of faith, we see the performance of possibilities that go beyond the natural scope of a believer's faith. For instance, if you see that the Red Sea parted because Moses acted by faith. The kind of faith that Moses operated in that occasioned the parting of the Red Sea was not a normal scope of the believer's faith. And that's why you might not, you cannot just go to River Benue now and command it to part, that it will obey. It will require a higher measure of faith which is not available normally to the believer. So in the gift of faith, God allows you to tap into a facility of faith that is beyond your own normal measure of faith in order for God to use you as an instrument or as an excuse to do something that is beyond your capacity of believing. In the gift of faith, it is God that is the one that supplies the capacity for you to believe that much. And that faith becomes a premise upon which God can set his foot to perform an action. If the gift of faith is in action, you do nothing. It is God that does everything. It is God that supplies the faith and it is God that does the miracle. So you will notice that 
in, when the Red Sea parted, it was not because Moses went to be packing water. His own involvement was not required in the miracle that took place. And any time the gift of faith takes place, the only thing you will see is that someone might speak according to the inspiration of the Holy Ghost that is given unto him. And the performance of the things that he says is not up to him. He just watches those things come to pass. So in the gift of faith, your own activity, your own action is not required. It is God that supplies the faith and it is God that honors the faith that he supplies into your spirit man by manifesting a miracle. The second power gift there is, is called the gifts of healing. The gifts of healing. And the reason why gifts there is in the plural is because sicknesses are of diverse kinds. And in the manifestation of the gifts of healings, what God does is that he makes you a specialist in one area of ailment. Even though the, yeah, he makes you a specialist. Have you ever been to Federal Medical Center? Have you ever been there before? Have you heard that there are some doctors called gynecologists? You have heard that there are some doctors called cardiologists? You heard that there are some doctors called internal medicine doctors? Some doctors are family doctors. Some, yeah? Help me. Which other? Neurologists? You are not doctors. You people mentioned. <laughs> Patrick, help us. Patrick. Give me one strange department in, in medicine. Okay, neurologist. Okay, all right. All right. <laughs> now, they are all doctors. They can prescribe drugs. But you see, they are competence. Even though all of them have basic training in general medicine, they have competencies that are specialized to several aspects of medicine. As you grow in the gift of healing, you will come to a point where even though, yeah, the blind will see, the lame will walk, but you will realize that the anointing that is upon you has strong affinity in a particular type or category of infirmities. So in this gift, there is specialization. As you begin to grow in it, you will notice that the anointing on you is more potent on one ailment than it is on the other. And, and a time may even come when the Holy Spirit will now give you a hint that as far as it is cancer, if you come there, the person will rise. I have my own list too. One of which is, um, what do I call that? Asthma. If I see asthma, I can use it to do lecture. So, you, there. Meanwhile, deaf people here, another part of my own list is deaf, deafness. Asthma, deafness, I'm a specialist in those areas. If it's deafness, oh, I don't need to pray much. The anointing itself has sensitivity to deafness. So, as you grow, you begin to discover that you are not a general practitioner, that there's an aspect of infirmity that your healing anointing was designed to check. And there is specificity, there is specialization when it comes to the administration of the healing anointing. And that's why it's called the gifts of healing. The third power gift happens to be the gift of walking of miracles. In the gift of working on miracles, the difference between the gift of working on miracles and the gift of faith is that in working on miracles, when, when God, the hand of God descends upon you, God will give you a wisdom, are you here, of something to do that will facilitate the miracle. In the gift of working on miracles, God empowers you to do something. In the gift of faith, you are likely to say something but not do anything. It is God 
that supplies the faith and is God that does the miracle, but in the gift of working of miracles, he empowers you strategically with a certain kind of wisdom to do something, and when you do that thing, the power of God is released to achieve the miracle. I came tonight to let us understand that God and resident in the Holy Spirit are abilities to cause changes. Acts of the Apostles chapter 3 will take a typical example as we study. Meanwhile, all of these are still very, very summarized versions, very summarized versions of the subject matter. And in the appropriate time, we will take our time to discuss the gifts of the Spirit. It is something that we need to do once every year, very thoroughly. Gifts of the Spirit. Now, Peter and John, Acts chapter 3, verse 1, went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid down daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask arms of them that entered into the temple. Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple asked an arm. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John said look on us. And he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, the silver and gold I have none, but such as I have I give thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. If it were the gift of faith, after that statement, rise up and walk, that's all. But it is a gift of working on miracles that was at work. I think the power giver operates in more is the gift of faith. Because I can tell you that there are four people that God will touch. And then God will touch them. And I have nothing to do with it. And I can continue doing that for as long as you are staying here. Because I know the way when the hand of God comes upon me, it normally comes with a gift of faith. Hallelujah. The weather, if the, that hand of the Lord comes upon me, I can speak to the weather. And you know, I don't have the ability to change the weather. But if the gift of faith is at work, the weather will change. But in this case, after the man said, look on us, silver and gold we do not have. But such as we have, we give unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. I haven't said that. The Bible says, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately. You see, there was an action. And I would like to tell you that that action is inspired by the Holy Ghost. It's not just an action that you premeditated. You plan from home that when you come, that woman that normally sits with crutches today, when I come today, when I come to, you will be disappointed. <laughs> Silver and gold I do not have, but such as I have I give unto you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the hand and lifted him up. You will notice that the power was released the moment he attempted to physically lift him up and then there was a spiritual hand that made him whole. So in the gift of walking up miracles, 
God inspires you. To engage in an action that will produce a miracle. And I want you to understand that in raising the dead, you can raise the dead by the gift of faith. You can raise the dead by the working of miracles. These are the two gifts by which you can raise the dead. However, If the person that died, died because of sickness, if you raise him from the dead, that sickness will still be on the person. So you will need the gift of healing to end the matter because that sickness can kill the person again. That means that in order for you to raise the dead, you need at least two active power gifts that are responsive in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can raise the dead by the gift of faith and you call the person's soul to come back. Come back! And then there's a miracle. That's the gift of faith. You can raise the dead by the working of miracles. After you have said, come back, you notice there's nothing happening. If you have watched the Hosa steps, you will see that there was a woman that died in his service and they brought her to the pulpit. He gave a command, the woman did not rise. And instantly, he was inspired and he said, Give me that bottle of water. As he poured the bottle of the water on the woman, he said, that's the gift of walking of miracle. And a, a, a preacher was traveling. You know, those, I don't know whether they still do it now. I don't, I don't travel with public transport anymore. But those days, when I used to travel in public transport, the, the driver's seat accommodates a passenger. How many of you still travel that way? Raise your hand so that I, you have put your name on my prayer list. It means you, you need prayers. You, know. you need strange prayer. So the driver sees accommodate one, one, accommodates one passenger. The driver drives with his left hand because the right hand has been choked by, by the passenger that, that is here. And then the other seat for one passenger takes two passengers. So there are four passengers on the front row. Even the manufacturer did not envisage that kind of number. So the driver was in his own seat. He was accommodating somebody else. And the preacher was, was on the other seat. And then there was another man by his side. And as they were going, there was an attack. And the man by his side died. They stopped the vehicle. Everybody was confused. He didn't have a, a cell phone. So for them to check and say, okay, let, this is mommy. Let's call mommy. No cell phone. So we're just going to put him by the roadside and continue the journey. It was a confusing moment. And the man of God prayed in, in tongues. And the Holy Spirit directed him. Say, can you just do as if you are pinching the man, the dead body? And as he pinched the dead body, the spirit came back. That's the gift of walking of miracle. There is a walk that you are inspired to do that what produces a miracle. Another man of God that I believe so much is in Beno State here. <laughs> they were traveling to Lafia and there was an accident. His wife actually died. And they brought leaves and put the wife on the leaves and he began to speak in tongues. Began to speak, and then the tongues began to become hot. Then he moved to where the wife was and called her name three times and said, Stand up. The wife is still alive now. <laughs> you know, I, I, I told you something. Part of our calling in the future is to spoil barriers. We'll be attending barriers. <laughs> oh, we'll be diligent. We'll be diligent to attend barriers. Not because we, are, we have anything to do with the people. It's when at the high moment, when they say, let's walk around and check the body, we say, uh-uh. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Let us investigate what Peter did. And he took him by the right hand. And he lifted. As he was lifting him, there was another hand that was there that people could not see. That hand gave the man, the man's leg strong. You see, God wants people to know that you 
to think that you are a powerful man. So he gives you an instruction. Can you raise him up? Attempt, behave as if you are raising him up. And as you are doing that and attempting, the power of the Holy Ghost is infused into the dead legs. And the Bible says immediately his feet and ankle bones receive strength. Now, how many of you are here? Be sincere with me. Maybe you were passing by, you saw somebody wheeling a crippled person. You were passing by, you saw a mad person. You were passing by, you saw blind people coming to you to beg. And you felt like you were supposed to pray for them. But you did not. Because the gift of working of miracles requires an, an obedience to a, an instruction, you can actually shut the gift down. Because when a move comes for you, and it's a very small move, it's a common thing. You know, I remember um, in the minister's conference, some younger ministers were asking a senior minister, how did you become an expert in the gifts of the spirit? And the senior minister said, if you are still afraid you are a learner. But the day you cast out fear, you become a master. In order for you to be competent in the administration of spiritual gifts, you need to die to self. Because most times you say, um, what if the person doesn't rise up? What's, what, so then what happened? You die. If you cannot go beyond that fear, you will always be a learner. You will be that voice that will say, when someone else moves by faith to do the, the thing and it works, you will be that voice to say, yes, I heard it. I... You will be there confirming things, but you will never become an actor. The gift of the working of miracles empowers you to become an actor with God. The reason why we have a book in the Bible called the Book of Acts, is because people acted under the influence of the Holy Ghost. That's what Acts is about. It's a compendium of human beings that acted by faith under the influence of the Holy Ghost. And that's why the book has no ending. Because actors are still on ground today. I remember there was a time when I used to pray and say, God, when will my own prayer healed the blind. Of all the miracles, the major miracles recorded in the Bible, heal the sick. Well, we don't have lepers around, so maybe that one is not in the list in Africa. Maybe in Mozambique, there might be crippled um, lepers, but here, we don't have the lepers. We don't even know how they look like. Okay, so to give sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, strength to the feet that are feeble. Right? In this category of miracles, it is blind eyes that were the most difficult for me to see. So I used to make it a prayer point. Lord, where will you use my hands, my command, my ministry to open blind eyes. So I was waiting for that season. And um, I think it started in Lagos. It started, first of all, people that are short-sighted will be healed, long-sighted healed, astigmatism healed, all kinds of stuff healed. And the way I celebrated that miracle is as if God was, okay, all right. Now I see the ones that even operation, operation was what made the person blind. It means that one is creative. The thing that spoiled, they tried to use surgery to correct it and it became flat. And then that eye now begins to see. Now, there are two things I need to tell us quickly. First of all, it is only God that can perform a miracle. We didn't hear that. 
It is what? That can perform a miracle. You hear what Nicodemus tells Jesus in the book of John chapter 3 from verse 1 verse 2, John 3, 2. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. What's the next statement there? For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. So no man can do miracles. It's only God that can do miracles. It's needful for us to understand this. Yes, God uses men, but if God is not on a man. If the hand of God is not on a man in that capacity, meeting that man is futility. Do you understand that? It is when God's hand is upon a man to perform miracles that miracles can happen. But ultimately, it is God that does miracles, not men. And just in case you start becoming anointed and people begin to know about you and they begin to travel place to place to come fellowship where you are so that if by any means the Lord might move through your life to reach out to them, be sincere to let everybody that listens to you know that you are not a miracle worker, that the miracle worker is the Lord and the Lord will do miracles if he wills, if he chooses so to do so that you can diffuse the pressure there is a lot of pressure, just like, hallelujah. There's a lot of pressure that accompanies a man that is anointed. But the man should be sincere enough to let people understand that, okay, right now that you have met me, I can pray a prayer of faith for you, but there is no healing anointing at work on my life. Because when these gifts begin to manifest, there are signs that God gives so that you will know that that gift is in administration at the moment. He said, no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Now, so, it is God that is the miracle worker, but if God is with you, he can use you to do miracles. You know, the guy said, this statement is deep. No man can do these miracles that thou doest. That's one. It's not of man. But if God is with you, he can use you to perform miracles. Is that clear? Number two, number two, a miracle is occasioned by a quiet move of God in your heart. You see, miracles on the external are boisterous, they are powerful, they can cause changes, but the trigger for these miracles are very quiet moves of God. Quiet. It might come like a voice. Pray for her now. And it's so faint. But masters know that in that faint voice is great power. So the trigger of a miracle is actually a very quiet move of God. Your ability to interpret that quiet move of God and to obey the prompting that the move brings is what translates to the release of the mighty hand of God. Number three. Is it three? The atmosphere of miracles is created by prayer. So when I finish this, my teaching now, I will switch on to prayer. 60% of the time, I will hit the atmosphere of miracle. So if you're a teacher like myself, when you finish teaching, because teaching, the teaching anointing is very domineering, you will need to be very, very spiritual to be teaching and receiving words of knowledge. Because the teaching anointing will cover your entire spirit. But you see, when you finish teaching, don't worry, be patient, do your teaching. Then you now disengage from your teaching and then you connect with prayer. The atmosphere of miracles is the atmosphere of corporate prayer. Corporate. 
So when you finish teaching, stop teaching. You finish preaching, stop preaching. Then you get the entire house to engage in prayer. When God begins to hear the prayer coming out of this congregation, he will be moved with compassion. And he is very likely to give you a sign. So the atmosphere of miracles is the atmosphere of corporate prayer. Corporate prayer. Corporate prayer. The waters will be stirred. And the Holy Ghost is going to move and minister to your heart. The moment he does that, it is left for you to carry out his instructions. And you see how that little promptings can translate to heavy, very heavy manifestations. I need to add this quickly that power is not synonymous with shout. Power. We went for a certain conference and in one of the sessions, an evangelist was called. And the way he, he, his entry to the pulpit was by a, a strange shout. And he wanted the drummer to be on the cymbals everywhere it was. Ah. Now, when he finished all the... He will run... He can, if you, hey, when he finished all this energetic... This, no one was healed. So power and shout, they are not, they are not synonymous. The power of God is tied to, just in case you like shouting, well, I'm not saying stop shouting. If you're on that, like Samson, the trigger for his anointing was Shabak. All right? So if, when you're under the Holy Ghost, you are inspired to shout, please be yourself. I'm just saying that that shout is not equal to power. Okay? However, we know evangelists that shout, and when they shout, there's power. But I'm saying that it is not necessarily synonymous with power. Power comes when the Spirit of God moves, and that move can be very quiet in the privacy of your, your being, and any time you respond to it, it, can, it produces a commotion. So there are two sides to power. The first side is the move of God on your heart that you connect with true obedience and submission and alignment and the boisterous miracle performing release of the hand of God. If you are not a master of interpreting the move of God upon your heart, there is going to be a disconnect. The circuit is going to break at some point and that which was supposed to be generating from your heart will not be strong enough to find external manifestation. So, the reason why I like music is because music makes me yield to the Holy Ghost easily. It makes me yield. I believe that the Holy Ghost in my heart likes soft music. You will need to be introduced to the Holy Ghost in your heart. The Holy Ghost on evangelist Philip's life can be very noisy. That's not how the Holy Ghost in my own life is. If you give evangelist Philip the mic now, he will not be able to stand here. He will move like this. Move, move. He will. That's how the Holy Ghost in him is. So study the Holy Ghost in you. The Holy Ghost in me is calm. The Holy Ghost in me inspires my mind. You need to know the Holy Ghost in you and how he moves. Not the way it, it, he moves in your pastor, but the way it moves in your own life. You need to be a good student of it. Because when Elijah was upon the mountain, he sent his servant to go back and check the sky. It was as if the impact of his prayer commitment was going to appear in the canvas of the sky. And the guy went and checked the first time. Came back to the master and told him there was nothing up there. And Elijah went down again on his knees and he gave another unit of prayer and asked his servant to go check the sky. I was wondering 
Because the sky he was going to check was just behind Elijah. Elijah would have turned and done the assessment himself. But he sent his servant to go check the sky. And so he kept sending him one time, two times, three times, four times, five times, six times. And this time the servant was already tired because it was monotonous and there was no result. And the seventh time, he sent him again. And when the man went, he wasn't expecting to see anything, but to his greatest dismay, he saw a small cloud that was shaped in the hand of a man. That was supposed to be the, what the prayer of Elijah produced in the spirit realm. That's how a small cloud can form on your heart. And that small cloud that formed in the sky was the sign to prove that there is an abundance of rain. You see, a small move on your spirit is the proof that there is a mighty surge of power. But if you don't know how to connect with that which your is created upon your heart and how to yield to it so that it enlarges and becomes strong within your vessel and through faith it is released to manifest in the natural. If, if, you, if you don't know how to translate the first side of a miracle to the second side of a miracle which is by yielding, by alignment and by faith. So the triggers of the first side of a miracle is yieldedness and you keep yielding until you align and when you align then you act by faith as you are inspired of the Holy Spirit your actions of faith is what will release the omnipotent power of God and I trust God that for everyone that is here, miracles will become your daily experience. If, if you really heard what I'm teaching today, then miracles will become your daily experience. Now, because of the nature of the subject that we are treating, I want to show you what I do. And I pray that the Holy Ghost will honor my prayers this night. So the first thing I do is to condition the atmosphere. The reason for conditioning the atmosphere is so that I can shut out distractions and be in control of the environment. As you can see, right now I'm not in control. This sound is not approved. So I'm not in control. You see, it will be difficult to yield when the atmosphere is not totally controlled. So why is it sounding that way? The speaker, remove the, the, the line. Right, so when the atmosphere is controlled, it takes away anxiety takes away haste because there are two emotions on your heart that make you miss the Holy Ghost the first is anxiety and the second is haste you need an atmosphere that is purged of anxiety an atmosphere that is purged of haste and then the character of your heart is the character of a waiting man you see, waiting is an indication of the fact that you understand that in yourself and by yourself, you can accomplish nothing. And you know that it's only when the Holy Ghost makes himself available that there's going to be a shift, a change in the environment. So your heart is aided through the controlled atmosphere to be in a state of waiting. If you have achieved that, the next thing to do is to pray in the spirit. 
when you get to the point where your inner heart has been adequately textured and it is it has surrendered you have achieved yieldedness and alignment then you can pray in the holy ghost when you pray in the holy ghost listen very very attentively listen 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 very very attentively because 70% of the speakings of God is not in words. Many times he chooses to give you signs. And if you cannot interpret the signs that the Holy Ghost has given you, then there's going to be a disconnect between your inner trigger and the outward explosion, which we call power. All right. So now I've achieved surrender in my heart. I will never start praying until I achieve this. Although it happens so fast that you cannot see the steps. Hallelujah. There are two ways I move in miracles. One of the ways is that I pray at home, see the service from home, then I come and act it. Now, if that's the way I used today, it will be hard for you to understand. So I didn't do that one. I came here without asking God about this service so that I will pray here. So if it's prayer time, you can rise on your feet now. I refuse to do that one. So that I will pray here. And everything that will be produced tonight will come from my prayer here. I am doing this as an example so that when you go, you can do likewise. Miracles. Quiet. Just like the servant of Elijah said, I see a cloud. There is a point you, pr you pray to where something is furnished on your heart. It can be a quiet cloud. But that is a sign of an abundance. Not a small rain, but an abundance of rain. So the thing that forms on your heart is inversely proportional to that which will happen by aligning with God through faith. That thing that furnished the manifestation is always inversely proportional. Exactly. The manifestation, he says it's a small cloud, but it's not a small manifestation. It's an abundant of rain. So, three prayer points. Power is the ability to cause changes. Now, is there any aspect of your life you are trusting God for a change? As we pray, God will release power. You know, it's a faithful God. All right. So, I want you to take note of the aspect of your life you need a change. As we go before the Lord in the next 15 minutes, we'll do this prayer for highest 15 minutes. It doesn't take too long for God to respond. So it doesn't take too long. 10 minutes, 20 minutes, he is responding. And please don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. When I'm in the closet praying, I can pray the whole day. I'm not ministering. I'm just communing. I'm trying to find God. It might take 8 hours and I have not found him. It might take 14 hours I have not found him. Because you see, my tracing God in my closet is based on the resources of the anointing that is within my heart. See, the workings, the usefulness of that anointing that is inside of your heart is different from the one that comes upon you. The anointing that is inside of your heart is the capital from whence you live a godly life. It's, it's the investment that makes it possible for you to hear the voice of God. Right? The workings of that inner anointing is different from the workings of the anointing that comes upon you so that you can perform an act of God and accept the hand of God comes upon you. The gifts of the Spirit will never go into operation. When the hand of God comes upon me, I begin to hear things from God about people. 
Are you with me? But you will not hear about yourself. Because that anointing upon you is to serve people. And even if you have the gift of healing and you are sick, it will not work for you. It is faith that comes from your own spirit that will affect your mortal body. And that faith is sponsored by the anointing that is within you. So it is possible for a man to be very anointed, but he cannot keep a home. Because he has not developed the anointing within. He's only functioning with the anointing that is upon him. It is very possible that a man is anointed, but he lacks direction. That means he cannot hear God for himself. He has not developed that. It means he has invested in prayer and fasting so that he can pray for the sick. But he has not grown to a point where he can hear God as his shepherd. And so he lacks direction. Oh, you, you, you don't know that people that are anointed can lack direction. Those are two. When you find that a man is steady, a man is stable, a man is true, he's not false, he's a man of integrity, he has built the anointing. Inside. That is why you look at his life and his life is the same with what he says. That harmony is a function of the fact that he has taken due diligence to build the anointing. This one requires long prayers. This one inside. Long. Oh, you want to you want to resist lust in your life. Lust comes with a lot of energy, you know. It, it is a compelling force. And spirits are traveling with it. For you to subdue it. You will need to release this one. It takes time. So the times that you will need to pray. In order for you to break beyond the habits. In order for you to stop going in the wrong direction. In order for you to be able to sense the voice of God as he leads you. That one is, is marathon. But this one is sprint. You do three days drive. And then this one will come on you. While it's on you, you can hear, you can even see that in your room there's a fridge, there's this. Don't think that that person is powerful. Because in that moment, it's very powerful. But when he steps down from the pulpit and that anointed lifts, you begin to live from the resources of this one. That's when you will discover whether or not he has developed the anointing here. So I'm saying this so that you can be balanced. Don't just go and develop. The key to developing this one to come on you is prayer and fasting. But praying and fasting is different from communing. I'm looking for God. So when I'm looking for God, I don't count the hours that I pray. Because I'm seeking him until I find him. I can come into the room, pray the whole day, and I not, I, I'm, I've not found God. No problem. Tomorrow, I'm not sad. Tomorrow, I will continue. Until I understand how he leads me as a person. What I need to do. A time came, many pastors ganged up against me. I went to my room, and I knelt down. And he said, stand still. And you will see the salvation of God. For the Egyptians you see today, thou shalt see them no more forever. So I stopped fighting. Indeed, a wild wind scattered all the Egyptians. When you start seeing that what you hear in your closet happens, here in your closet, it means you have found the Lord who is your shepherd. If you keep following him, he will lead you out of poverty. That way. So that economy is different. That one makes you stable. It makes you wise. It makes you have power to endure. But this one makes you powerful. It makes you fight. And when you fight with it, you will win. <laughs> so, that's why there are some fights we are going to fight this night as the thing opens. So I came, I came without it so that you will see how I generate it. 
Once your heart has yielded, begin to pray in tongues. Oh, I must say it. I copelamonos isosali. I akomeni masakombre zuzeske presko feta malakunda agai toko presku feza malai toku salama mantala. I camelo brosco, photo me de kiske tedia, zico mazalita branta babolo zi, a maiko pata cubre cabaseli mucombre, liga balataya, a scupre ketela, suma cabela cuda macatalia, isco menes, a sala montali, a maiko presco filami, a scabalanto se saito cobre macatali. Eli moke skabonde mamala, jama kumpas keto bronde kapata mundelia, ikos amati, ikos ataite, ikos keto moske sa saminandelia, abrama kapata dia skibo samande. Amis ko se sa sali, abrai ko patu alat, iko pres ko pele kedia, is kama kote masala boboria. Salia kapa kunde. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
did not notice in Jesus' name. Many of you did not notice when we transported. When you go beyond the threshold. When, when, when you go beyond the flesh. That's what 120 means. 120. The cut off mark for the flesh. The flesh has a cut off mark. You see, remember the temple of Solomon? There were about 120 priests ministering. And the Bible says, a time came when the priests could no longer minister. 120. You need to know when you go beyond 120. Oh, on the day of Pentecost, there were 120 people trying to do something. Then something came. The cut off mark. You can go beyond 120. That's when your spiritual eyes open. And you can say like Elijah, I see, I see a cloud. I see a cloud. I see a cloud. Your spiritual senses are activated. I see a cloud. Come and 